Hello, Peacock Nation. Welcome to today's edition of Peacock Talk. I'm Donnie Kendall. And I'm Jamina Sorman. In the tropics, many have been impacted by Hurricane Matthew. The storm was rated as a Category 4 hurricane and nicknamed the Storm of a Decade. Last Wednesday, Los Angeles County Sheriff Sergeant Stephen Owen was shot and killed in a line of duty. Owen was the father of Chad and Brandon Owen, former members of the Peacock football team. The Owens were well known all over campus and were a fixture at UIU football games. Our thoughts and prayers are being sent to those impacted by Hurricane Matthew and the Owen family. And we would like to observe a moment of silence in honor of those who have fallen. Thank you. In local news, many new charitable organizations in town are being founded by UIU students. Love Your Melon, a charitable organization which donates 50% of net proceeds of all products are donated to nonprofit partners in the fight against pediatric cancer, as well as a beanie for every child battling cancer in America. Dylan Field sat down with Adrian Staten to find out more about the UIU chapter of Love Your Melon. It was just something that came up last year. Um, I know there was a group of people that really wanted to do it, but they were too late for the process. So I just found the thing online, the sheet that you fill out, um, and decided Upper Iowa really needed it, and I think it's a really good cause. So I just filled out the sheet. Um, and then that night, I found they told me that we got accepted, and I had to find some people, and I found people, got all the paperwork filled out, and now it's a go. There was an online form, kind of like a Google Doc form, to fill out to say like why Upper Iowa wanted it. Um, they wanted some of my um, personal information just so they knew I was kind of really about uh, about the process and really kind of would support Love Your Melon and wouldn't kind of leave them in the dust. For every hat or um, thing that you buy, they have hats, they have t-shirts, they have lanyards, um, all sorts of different things, mugs. Um, so every for every item that's bought, 50% of the proceeds goes to pediatric cancer research, and then a child gets a beanie. So you just go to loveyourmelon.com, um, and then you decide what you want to buy, um, the t-shirts, the hat, whatever you want to buy. Every Monday they come out with new um, hats. So today they, they came out with a new group of beanies, a new group of cuffed beanies, and then they have beanies with palms on them. Um, and then you decide what you want to buy and then right before you hit checkout it'll say select a campus crew to support in the bottom left hand cor corner you type in Upper Iowa University campus crew and then we get the credit. M my role as the crew captain is I just I try and get everybody hyped up about it, um, get really excited. Um, I do I work a lot with the regional manager which he's above me and he doesn't he's not from Upper Iowa but I work with him just to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to filling out our sheets um, our we have to have meetings every other week um, making sure that our social media sites are going the way we want them and um, all of that and then uh, we also I also work with the our executive team making sure that People are supporting Love Your Melon, doing what they're supposed to, um, just really helping with the with kids. Support the kids and um, really support Love Your Melon. It's a really great cause. Be sure to support Love Your Melon. For KPCK TV, I'm Dylan Field. There are over 400 Peacock student athletes who come from all over the world. Little under 10% of those do not live in the United States, including myself. I was given the opportunity to talk with fellow international student athletes about what it's like to play the sport that we love here in the U.S. Uh, my name is Isabella Sella, I'm from Brazil, and I play tennis for Upper Iowa University. Uh, everything started when I tried to play some professional tournaments in Brazil, but I found out that the expenses were huge and my family couldn't deal with all the expenses. So I actually did try for a year uh, to play uh, professional tournaments and junior tournaments right after high school, but sponsors are hard to find and I had a bunch of agents trying to recruit me to come to colleges in the U.S. So then I decided to just try to study at the same time as I play a high level of tennis. So I had friends in America and 
they came with agents, so they told me all the process, what I had to do. So the first step was actually record a video uh, playing tennis with all my strokes, backhand, forehand, serves, and my sister helped me with that. So I did this video. The next step, I just downloaded it on YouTube and sent it to all coaches. I had a list of schools that I wanted to go and then I sent it to all of those coaches and they got back to me and told me that I had to take the TOEFL, which is uh, an exam, an English exam that, that tests your grammar, uh, speaking, listening and all, all those. Uh, so I took this exam and then I got my grade back to them and they, they, they made the offer. Well, that was funny actually how I ended up here because when I first got the, the contact from the coach that was the first school that I said, nope, not going there, like, it's cold, it's in the middle of nowhere. But I end up here because of my academics and also because of the scholarship I got. I love it. Uh, I know everyone. I mean, not everyone, but like, I know most of the athletes and I get along with my team very well. I also have my best friend here, she's from Sweden, and my roommate, my doubles partner. So I feel like I have everything I need here now. Uh, my major is exercise science. Uh, I would like to be a coach after I graduate. Uh, I'm still going to try to be an assistant as soon as I graduate so I can have more experience. But after that, I would like to become a head coach in a good school. I like the professors, the staff, the coaches. Uh, they're all very welcoming. Uh, I miss my family and the culture the most because, I don't know, I mean, I'm from there, so of course I love my country's culture. Uh, I like the way we always have barbecues on Sundays to watch soccer together, just to hang out together. Uh, no, I definitely have no regrets at all. I love it here. I love the experience I'm living. Um, I would say to every athlete around that if they want to play a high level of tennis or any other sports and also get their degree, come to America, try to get a scholarship here, because at the same time you're getting your studies done, you're also playing your, your sport, and that's what, that's what makes me stay here, because I'm also getting a degree, so it's, it's worth it. Last week, Upper Iowa celebrated the 100th homecoming in school history. Activities included sidewalk chalk, window painting, pep rally, intercollegiate athletics, and the Athletics Hall of Fame induction. On behalf of all of us here at KPCK-TV, we would like to congratulate the homecoming king, Dustin Hoffs, and homecoming queen, Kelly Jakimowski. With that said, let's send it over to Dane to talk about how the Peacocks played last weekend. Hello everyone and welcome back to Peacock Sports. Last show I talked about how coach James Price was turning around our women's soccer team and how they were playing better and better. Since then, the Peacocks has, have rattled off five straight wins and have moved up to fifth in the conference standings. The Kayla Petrie-led defense has been excellent all year, giving opponents 14 shots and less than one goal per game. So that leads us to the offense. At the beginning of the year, the Peacocks struggled, scoring four in their first six games. But on their five-game winning streak, the Peacocks have already scored 10. This offense has been led by a multitude of Peacocks, including a pair of scores from Jordan Ostrowski, Birgit Reinders, and Anna Atterberry. Hopefully the ladies can keep up the momentum. Women's soccer has two games this weekend against the University of Mary and the nationally ranked Minot State Beavers. Good luck this weekend, ladies. Now on to volleyball, which brings us to our second Peacock profile, Chelsea Berry. Chelsea Berry, I'm from Arlington, Iowa, and I play volleyball. I only live 10 minutes away, so Upper Iowa was always like um, a place that we came to to watch games, especially basketball games when I was younger, and my sister actually played golf here, 
So um, I guess it kind of ran in the family. Initially, my sister probably made me choose Upper Iowa. She played golf here, so um, I really enjoyed coming and watching her and just getting to know the university and the people that went here. The friends that she made were awesome, and I wanted to have that same experience. So what stood out to me the most was the sense of community that Upper Iowa has to offer. I started all the way back in middle school. Um, I started playing club and then worked my way into junior high ball and then high school. And then from there, I, um, I played on a club team, an AAU team, and then a high performance team as well. And that's actually where I met Coach Nelson. Uh, he was the high performance coach there. So he actually brought me to Upper Iowa and I was impressed with, with what he stood for in his coaching philosophy. And so I decided to follow him here. I would say my dad motivated me the most. He was a very good volleyball player himself, and so um, I think he got me started and just kind of built that passion with me, and he would work with me every night in the backyard. It felt like a dream come true, to be honest. I knew that Upper Iowa was my first choice in the school, and when I finally got that call, um, I was just overjoyed because I knew that this is where I'd fit in, and. Um, this is where I wanted to spend the next four years of my life. If I could do any other sport, it would be track and field. Um, I was pretty successful in high school, and I know the coach really wanted me to come here, but um, ultimately I wanted to focus on volleyball, so I just stuck with it. My favorite memory would have to be uh, beating Winona State in five my freshman year. That was super exciting, and um, it just felt like the energy in the gym was awesome. I would say most people don't know that I have a musical side to me. I kind of grew up uh, playing piano and the alto saxophone, and I really enjoyed it, and I even started singing. So it was really tough trying to come back um, from that severe of an injury, and I kind of had to find it within myself to overcome it and work as hard as I possibly could uh, to get back to where I needed to be so I could continue leading the team um, as a junior. Competing in the Northern Sun has been a challenge. A lot of the times, I mean, playing the toughest teams in the country is not always easy. And um, I mean, I learned a lot from my failures and uh, what worked, what didn't work. And getting through that and now being a senior, I just realized that it's been um, great trying to compete with all of the other great players. After graduation, I plan on going to PA school at the University of Dubuque, and that's something I've been working really hard to accomplish, and I finally got my letter of acceptance, so that was really exciting. Peacocks, with the likes of Chelsea Berry, look to get two huge upsets versus ranked opponents. Number six, Augustana University on Friday, and number nine, Wayne State College on Saturday. So go cheer on our ladies at Dorman Gymnasium. The Peacocks wrestling program has officially started their 2016-17 campaign this last Monday. They come into the season with huge expectations as they finish 17th in the national finals last year with returners like Malik Williams, Zach Bennett, and Ryan Parmalee. They are looking to improve on that ranking. Upper Iowa's first regular season match is the showdown at sundown on Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. versus Truman State. Let's get to some highlights. The Peacocks football team only held a 1-4 record going into Saturday's game versus Winona State, but the men's football team was excited and prepared for Saturday's game in front of our homecoming crowd. Picking it up from the first drive of the game, the Warriors had drove down the field and were on the upper Iowa's three-yard line but our defense would not break. The Warriors running back goes to the left side of the field and bam, Upper Iowa hits him and creates a fumble where Upper Iowa gets the ball back. 
And now we got Dimitri Morales looking, looking, surveying the field. Gets away from the defense and gets it to Jared Edmonds for the score. Which would give the Peacocks the tying score. And this is the first touchdown of the game as Jack Nelson goes back. Fires it deep down the field and scores the 33-yard touchdown. This is Jack Nelson again surveying the field. And he throws it deep. But it's picked off by Nick Corley, who gets a couple blocks. He heads to the sideline. This is a good return. He takes it up to the sideline to about the upper Iowa 35. We pick it up in the second half now. And scary punting. Blocked by Winona State. And number 15, Winona State, takes it back for the touchdown. That would give Winona State Warriors a two-touchdown lead. This is Dimitri to Skylar Lehman who makes a move, gets a great block by David Eswine, and get off me, he says, as he takes it to the touchdown. And, and Upper Iowa would, would bring it to one score, but that is how, that is all Upper Iowa would get as the Winona State Warriors would take the game 27-13 over our Upper Iowa Peacocks. And now we move on to our third Peacock profile, Trey McTaggart. I'm Trey McTaggart. I am a redshirt senior. I'm from Manchester, Iowa. I play football here at Upper Iowa. It'd be middle of July or end, end of July, we'd have team camp here. So I was always exposed to Upper Iowa and the coaching staff. And I mean, there was a few of them that were still here when I got here. Coach Shea was here. But um, coming up here for that just kind of got me familiar with the campus and uh, just being able to talk to the coaches early was was nice, and then that just kind of gave me my exposure for them for the next three, four years. I chose Upper Iowa because uh, I was really big into, you know, I wanted my parents, I wanted family members, I wanted people to be able to come watch me. And uh, taking visits other places, being five, six, ten, ten hours away, you know, um, I didn't think I'd have a lot of opportunities for family members, uh, friends to come watch. I felt great. I just he was the first uh, first school that offered me a scholarship, so it was kind of like a big weight off my shoulders. Like I could stop worrying about it because I was really, I was really, uh, you know, stressing out about it towards the end of my senior year of football. I hadn't really heard a lot back from some coaches that had previously talked to me, and um, I was wondering if I, you know, would get the chance to, you know, get get a scholarship and, you know, you know, play play football in that that aspect. So um, when when I did receive that call, it was a big weight off my shoulders, and having him be the first one to do it, I mean, just kind of also kind of solidified the deal coming here. It's just I could tell they wanted me. Like I said, when I used to come here for camp uh, throughout high school, I mean, there was no turf. It was the old stadium, and to be honest, when I always come here, I was always I didn't even really being only 45 minutes away. I didn't know that much about Upper Iowa. I mean, I almost didn't know it existed till I came here my freshman year for camp. So seeing it, it was just kind of like, I, I really didn't even understand what it was all about. I mean, D2, I mean, what's, what is this? What's going on here? And, uh, you know, as we kept coming here, then it'd be my senior year, they had turf. And then recruiting, recruiting wise, they really pitched, you know, this place, you know, it's, it's spectacular. It's, it's one of the best press boxes, one of the best, you know, all around stadiums, you know, in our conference, probably in, in D2 almost. It's, it's a beautiful place to play and it's, I mean, it's fun to come out and see full crowd, which we tend to do. After graduation, I plan on either going to grad school or I'm just going to get right into teaching. I'm a K-12 uh, phys ed and health uh, teacher, or will be, and uh, I have a special ed endorsement, so not sure quite yet where I'd like to teach, but uh, I'm excited to move on and get that part of my career going and see where that takes me. I'm excited to coach, plan on coaching football, maybe some track, baseball. Now it's time for my Peacock shout outs for the show. The first goes to Skylar Lehman. The Peacock's tight end has amassed 16 catches, 235 yards, and three touchdowns. 
in the last two games for the Peacocks. Huge numbers for the redshirt freshman. The second goes to Birgit Reinders as she has scored two goals for the women's soccer team in the five game win streak the Peacocks are currently on. And that's all we have for sports. Now back to you, Don and Jamina. Thanks, Gil. KPCK TV produces Peacock Talk along with other programs. In the first part of our Get to Know the Staff series, Taylor Hoth sat down with Dan Gillespie, one of our staff members and sports anchors. My name is Dan Gillespie, and I'm from Fountain, Minnesota. And I am a double majoring in sports communication and business administration, and I am a sophomore this year. I, I joined KPCK because, well, besides the fact that I'm a sports communication major, it's, it's really doing what I love. Like, sports is my passion, that's why I'm the sports anchor. And I feel like it's a perfect way to gain experience and get my name out there. I think the goal of this station is uh, to provide Upper Iowa with news for the students. And that's what I hope we do going forward. Right now, before KPCK, there was really no way that students would know about things going on on campus. Uh, they maybe would only know about their own sport and not other sports. So that's why we're here, to inform the students about what's going on at UIU. That's all we have for you today, Peacock Nation. Be sure to check us out on social media. And until next time, so long, take care, and feathers up. <laughs>